Let's get back to Paul Harris and his top picks. Bank of America is your first idea, Paul. I've talked about Bank of America a lot of times on the show. Uh, you know, Bank of America for, to me is a great company that it's 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 uh, it owns 10% of all the assets in the United States. The bank continues to reduce its cost structure not only through um, you know uh, kind of furlong people, but also through technology. It trades at it trades at you know great 10 times earnings. It's trading all below book lo book value. It has it has a great yield of 2.1%. So you have a, a you know a, not an expensive company. They've got some great businesses, whether it's Merrill Lynch, whether it's their investment banking, they're one, two, or three in most of those businesses. So I think that really helps them. Um, it, the, the other thing I think is that management has been very strong on their loan book. And I think that you will see them continue to be able to grow their businesses uh, organically, which is what they have to be able to do because they really can't afford to buy any new companies. So they are a, they will be able to buy back their shares, but not as much as they were before, and they should be able to increase their dividend. And the payout ratio is substantially lower than most of the Canadian banks. Okay, your next idea is First Service, the big real estate service company. So, so First Service is a Canadian company. First Service does two things. They kind of take care of uh, management management of properties, and they have a franchise business like California Closets, and, and, and um, um, Dave, uh, California Closets is one of the big names. But what I like about this company is that they've done able to do two things. One is that they grow organically, and they make acquisitions. And so that has really helped them out. They're very good on the acquisition side. And although they're pretty a very large player in the business, one of the largest players in their in their sector, the industry is very fragmented. So they can actually do all these tuck-on acquisitions on a regular basis, which really helps them. So it's a low capital business. It's, it's a low uh, uh, capex business. So I think that and a lot of and they can generate a lot of free cash from their businesses over periods of time. The stock has fallen because it's a high multiple stock, but I, I, I continue to believe that this is a great time to own this company. Uh, they continue to outperform and they really execute incredibly well and management is very good. And finally, Toronto Dominion Bank. Right, so TD Bank, uh, I, we've owned it for a very long time. I think TD's got a great uh, you know, retail franchise in this country. Uh, they've they really spent their time thinking about not being a as you know being an investment bank to help uh, being an investment bank, but not being trying to compete with big players in the investment banking side. The stock is trading at ten times earnings. You get a four point three percent dividend yield, uh, and it's trading at one point four times the book. So it's not expensive in my view. They've come off the banks, so I think it's a good time to own these businesses. Uh, you know, I think their U.S. franchise has suffered. Although they have a very strong U.S. franchise, I mean, it's not, it, it's, it's a tough business in the United States. And I think I've talked about it on the show before. And people have sort of been critical about it. But I think getting that scale in the United States will help them be a very successful business in, in the long run. So I do like uh, it right here. And I think that, uh, you know, owning any Canadian bank at these levels uh, is going to be good for you. But I, we prefer TD and Royal. TD and Royal. And just remind us what stands out for those two. Well, the, the, the Royal Bank really has kind of spent their time and energy being a good uh, investment bank, but also being a good asset manager. TD, in my view, is really, and they both have very strong Canadian franchises. So TD, in my view, spent a lot of time developing the Canadian franchise, having a great, uh, you know, an asset management business in this country. So, you know, banks tend to really, and a, and a good retail business around the world, in Canada specifically, it can be a between a you know a 12 to 15 percent ROE business, return on equity business. And I think the Royal and the TD have, are able to do all that very, very successfully. So I think that's what's important is that they've they've got some great franchise businesses within their in their, within the company that outperform on an ongoing basis. And I think that this environment is a tough environment, and that's why the stocks have fallen, interest rates have gone up, and there's been a lot of volatility about the housing market in Canada. But I think on, in the long term, these companies do really, really well when you buy them. Uh, you know, if you can buy them below book level, that's great. But if you can buy them here, where you're getting a great yield and owning them for the longer term, you'll do very, very well over the next couple of years with TD or Royal.